Activision is known for doing some extremely greedy things when it comes to their wonderful franchise called Call of Duty. There's always something new with either a microtransaction model or DLC that they're trying to sell or even exclusive content that there's always a massive gap between the player base and they're always trying to separate everybody in some type of way. Now over the time, especially with Modern Warfare, it's gotten a lot better. Compare Black Ops 4 to Modern Warfare, I would take Modern Warfare microtransactions any day of the freaking week compared to Black Ops 4. Black Ops 4 just had by far the worst microtransaction ever in the history of microtransactions. But when they did Modern Warfare, they were very specific that they're going to do all free DLC maps, they're going to do all free weapons and stuff like that, and the only thing that we got to pay for is stuff inside the store. Now, if you don't remember back in the day when it came to Black Ops 4 and World of War 2 and every single Call of Duty game out there, DLC maps were always something that you had to pay money for. You either purchase the season pass before the game releases, so you get it all for free, technically free, you get it for a discount, or you go ahead and you buy each DLC map pack that you want individually. This definitely made Activision a ton of money. Trust me, having extra maps and weapons and stuff like that that you had to pay for, especially with the loot box system that they had in Black Ops 4 and all those overpowered weapons, people were spending so much cash trying to get all these guns so they can stomp out lobbies. It was ridiculous. But at the end of the day, it split the player base. It split everybody apart. You know, having to pay for DLC maps is going to split the people who paid for them and split the people who didn't pay for them. So basically, it made lobbies harder to get, especially when a game gets very old and it's out of date and stuff like that. It's going to be 10 times harder to find lobbies, especially if you're someone who purchased DLC, or even if you're a person who didn't purchase DLC, it's going to make it very complicated for you to matchmake with a bunch of other people. So when Modern Warfare dropped, they scrapped the whole idea. They scrapped the whole process of having DLC maps and stuff like that that you purchased, and they gave it to everybody for free, including crossplay, with the goal of hopefully making sure that the player base does not die within two seconds, and that people don't have to be, you know, forced to be separated, or they can't play with friends or something like that, all because one person bought DLC and the other person didn't. You know, it's a very messed up thing. So they changed it up a little bit in Modern Warfare. And it made tons of money, millions of dollars in microtransactions. It's, it's making bank for Activision. So obviously... This whole new microtransaction system that they have going on here is absolutely amazing. It's a really good deal. And me personally, you guys already know my opinion about the microtransaction system. I hope they keep the same system throughout all the rest of the Call of Duty games because it's perfect. It's fair for the consumers. You buy a battle pass and you can grind for camos throughout the battle pass. But everything else that's pay to win like weapons is free. And also the maps which will split up the player base is free as well for everybody. So the two main factors that will really make a game aggravating for pay to win people is, has been taken out of Call of Duty, and it's more of an even playing ground. But I'm assuming because they did all of this stuff with the microtransactions, they're going to be trying to find other ways to make more money. And one of the best possible ways to make money is the exclusive deals that either Microsoft or Sony will pay Activision so they can get exclusive content for their actual consoles. And as you all know, we've seen both sides. Microsoft has had tons of years of having exclusive content, and so has Sony had tons of years of getting exclusive content. If you ask me, I think that there should be no such thing as exclusive content. I still hear so many Sony fanboys saying, it's only fair, but trust me, it's been even. And Microsoft and Sony have had both equal amount of years of having exclusive content. So at this point, it should be over with. You both had your equal share. There's no, oh, he had it for this many. No, it's, it's no, more, no more of that, okay? You both had it for the same amount of time. And I'm not fanboying. I've had pretty much a PlayStation 3 and a PlayStation 4 for so, so, so long. So I've always had exclusive content when it comes to the Call of Duty side. So I, I'm, I mean, I'm just complaining because it's unfair to a lot of people. It's just ridiculous. But exclusive deals is how Activision is going to be making a ton of money on top of, of course, all the microtransaction sales that they're going to be making off of cosmetics. But one thing that really scared me a little bit in Modern Warfare was the fact that they held survival mode for a full year now a lot of people are going to be like oh it's just survival mode you know there's nothing big about survival when it comes to a call of duty video game you know you have multiplayer you got campaign you got spec ops that's honestly all you need when it comes to a call of duty video game but it's a very common trend for activision to test things out and they don't stop testing right away and this is the first time that i i think i can remember i don't remember any other time but in my recent memory this is the first time they have ever taken a complete game mode and made it exclusive for a console only for a full year this is the first time that i can ever remember something like this happening and like like i said i understand survival is not a big deal but activision likes to experiment and this is only the first time they have taken a full game mode out i think that they're probably going to experiment more and that could really be a massive downside when it comes to Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War and could potentially ruin a lot of the progress. I mean, yes, I'll be happy if I get multiplayer and stuff like that, but what if they lock zombies out? 
What if zombies mode, one of the most anticipated modes out of the whole video game, gets completely locked out and nobody can use it? You know, Spec Ops and Survival is an Infinity Ward thing, but Treyarch only has one thing that they do, and that is zombies. There's no survival, there's no Spec Ops, there's zombies. You get multiplayer, campaign, and zombies. And if Activision does the same exact thing that they did with Modern Warfare, with giving PS4 or the next PS5, whatever it is, exclusivity to, you know, a specific mode, it's more than likely going to be zombies. I can't imagine them doing campaign or doing multiplayer. Both of those are two very big sellers. But zombies, I can totally see them doing this. And if they do that, oh my lord, it's going to be so much negativity pointed towards this video game. And like I said, it will destroy the game. So far, so good with Black Ops Cold War. Like I've been saying for the longest time, it looks outstanding to me. It plays outstanding. I'm very excited to get my hands on this video game. But it's on very thin ice right now. After a full year of Modern Warfare, a lot of the fan base is very skeptical about the next game. They're very cautious about what's going to go on. And God forbid they tell the fan base that Xbox and PC has to wait a full year just to play Zombies. It's going to be an absolutely horrible outrage in the community. And trust me, I know. I'm, I'm definitely reaching here. Okay, this is probably not going to happen. I cannot imagine Activision actually removing the full portion of zombies out of the video game for a full year. Like, that would be a little too extra. And like I said, it will be an insane backlash. They know it will be insane backlash. They're not that stupid. But everything seems to be going a little too right for me in my personal opinion. Like I said, when Modern Warfare first came out and the microtransaction system was introduced... I was telling myself that this is the best thing that we have ever seen in a Call of Duty video game. If only we just had good gameplay to match the microtransaction system. So it's a good microtransaction system along with a good game could potentially bring us one of the best Call of Duty games ever made. And I was just so disappointed with Modern Warfare and how it played that it just I, I just couldn't continue playing with the game. And then here we are with Cold War, and everything is just right for some reason with me. I know everybody has their mixed emotions about the video game, but on this channel, and me personally right now after playing the alpha, the gameplay was there. It felt very clean, very smooth, very fun, and like I said, for skilled players, and I like games with a skill gap. If they keep the same microtransaction system, this literally could potentially be one of the best Call of Duty games we will ever get our hands on. But it just seems strange. You know, I've been disappointed multiple times in the past, I guess I should say. I haven't had fun with a Call of Duty game. Well, I can't say I haven't had fun, but I haven't had a completely good, enjoyable experience with a Call of Duty game since uh, forever. I mean, maybe it was just because, you know, I was new, I was young, I guess I should say, when the other Call of Duty games came out and games like World at War, Call of Duty 4, uh, Modern Warfare 2, games like that I loved. Like, I was obsessed with Call of Duty back then. Maybe it was just my age and how early on I was with the game. I mean, I was only three years in. Currently, I'm 10 plus years in on the franchise. You know, maybe it's just because I've been playing the game for so many years. Wow, that's actually crazy to think about. Holy crap. I, I I never actually sat down and thought that, you know, Jay, you've been playing this game for 12 years straight as your main single game. Like, I played this game for the full year every year. And yes, there were some games on the side that I would dabble in, like maybe Need for Speed or other games like that. Call of Duty was the main video game I played for 12 plus, oh my god. <laughs> but honestly, that might be why, you know, I'm not getting the same feeling about Call of Duty but at the same time, I really do believe that the Call of Duty developers just haven't been able to get anything good out. You know, it was always things here and there, like maybe it was good gameplay but a bad microtransaction system, or a good microtransaction system with bad gameplay, or a good gunplay with horrible streaks, or, you know, great streaks but no gun variety. It's, it's literally always something that is wrong. It can never be 100% right. And I just, I, at this point in time, it's like everything is slowly connecting and it could potentially be one of the best games that I've ever seen that comes from a Call of Duty game. But at the same time, in the back of my head, I'm thinking, you know, th this can't be right. There has to be something going on that I'm not thinking of behind the scenes. It has to be de like tiny details that nobody would think of that's going to happen when the game finally releases that's just going to catch everybody by surprise. And this was one of those things. Like I said, who knows if they're going to do it. Like I said, probably not. You know, Zombies is massive, but can I see Activision doing something like this? Yeah, I could so totally see them doing something like this. They don't care about the fans. They only care about the money. If Sony pays a good enough price for exclusivity to Zombies, they'll take it. 
They're not going to sit there and say, hmm, you know, the fans are really going to be angry. Or, hmm, you know what, the fans might not enjoy not being able to play zombies for a full year. They're going to see a fat check, and that's going to instantly make them make up their mind. They're not going to think anything about the community. Even though Treyarch would know, and, you know, Infinity Ward would know, the developers always know, you know? No matter what, they still do enjoy and love their communities. But Activision doesn't. You know, they are the publishers, they're not the ones sitting there developing the game. So yes, I really do love Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. It's an outstanding video game when it comes to the gameplay, and I see tons of potential when it comes to this game. But I'm not going to be completely hyped up about the game still, because in the back of my mind, I still have to remember, Activision can do anything scummy to completely screw everything up with this title. And Treyarch can do absolutely nothing about it. It could be completely out of their hands. So of course I'm going to give a round of applause to Treyarch. For making this video game and putting their heart and soul into it because the gameplay is really solid. I really enjoy the alpha and I'm assuming the gameplay is going to play just as good in the beta and in the real game. As long as they don't add all this cheese so noobs can get tons of kills, I'll be satisfied. But if it's less cheese like it was in the alpha and just basically all around gun skill, I'm going to enjoy what I have here to play with. But I can't get too excited about it because at the end of the day, Activision could do something completely scummy that's completely out of control of any developer that will completely ruin this game. Like I said, exclusive zombies or adding back in paid to win stuff. Who knows what their whole system, even though I think it was already confirmed that the Modern Warfare microtransaction system is coming back. But if they if they wanted to, they could and Treyarch could do nothing about it. It's all up to Activision or a thick skill based matchmaking to make sure everybody has to sweat like they do in Modern Warfare. That's all up to Activision. You know, Activision has full control over screwing up this game. So I'm still going to be very wary of what's going on with this title, but at the same time, I'm very happy with what Treyarch put out here, and I could see what Treyarch was aiming for. But guys, I'm going to end the commentary off here. If you enjoyed it, make sure you go ahead and leave a like, and by all means, if you hate it, leave a dislike. Also, if you're brand new and enjoy the commentary, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button. Also, if you want to chat with me, there's two ways to do so. I have a Twitter account, and I have a Discord. Both of those links are down in the description. And also, if you want to catch me live stream some video games, I do that over on Twitch. Link to that is in the description as well. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.